In this video, you have a few objectives related to arcs and angles of a circle. First objective is to be able to identify inscribed angles and know how they're related to the arc they intercept. Second, you're going to use the following three conjectures to find missing angles and arc measures within a circle. The first conjecture is that the central angle and measure of an intersected, intersected arc, they are always going to be congruent. Now, the central angle is the anger at this angle at the center of a circle. Okay, in this case, it's 80 degrees. An arc is a piece of the entire circle. The entire circle is 360 degrees. In this case, from A to B, it's 80 degrees. Notice how the arc measure and the central angle are always the exact same. If the central angle intercepts that arc, then they're always going to be congruent. So in this picture here, the measure of CAE, angle CAE, at the center is going to be congruent to the arc it intercepts from C to E. And it's already said that the measure of arc CE is 140 degrees. That means the central angle is also going to be 140 degrees. So whenever you see a central angle intercepting an arc, know that the measures are going to be exactly the same. Now the inscribed angle conjecture. An inscribed angle is an angle with a vertex on the edge of the circle. So in this picture here, the green angle has a vertex on the edge of the circle. Contrast that with the pink angle, which has a vertex at the center of the circle. This is called a central angle. And this angle A is called an inscribed angle. Now the relationship between the two is that the central angle is always twice as big as the inscribed angle. Or conversely, the inscribed angle is always half as large as the central angle. So in the picture directly to the right here, the central angle is 56 degrees. So that means the inscribed angle is going to be exactly half of that, 28 degrees. Now when I mentioned central and inscribed angle, they both have to have the same exact endpoints and intercept the same arc. So in this example here, angle ABC and angle AOC both intercept the same arc AC. Now if that is true, and then the relationship exists. So in this first example here, the measure of arc SH here is going to be 40 degrees because the arc and the central angle are always exactly the same. Now the angle SMH right here, notice how the vertex is on the edge of the circle. This angle is always half as large as the central angle. So if the central angle is 40 degrees, divide that by 2, and your inscribed angle is 20 degrees. Now it can work the other way as well. In number 2, they want you to find the measure of angle ABC, which is the inscribed angle, given that this arc is 100 degrees. Well, if the arc is 100 degrees, that means the central angle, AOC, is also 100 degrees. So AOC is 100 degrees. ABC is going to be 100 degrees divided by 2, which is 50 degrees. So if the inscribed angle and central angle intercept the same arc, the inscribed angle is half as large as the central angle. Inscribed angles don't change their measure depending on where they're on the circle, as long as they intercept the same arc. So in this example here, you'll notice that there's two inscribed angles, the red and the blue. Both are 51.09 degrees. They're both congruent because they intercept the same purple angle that I'm coloring over right now. And that angle is 102.17 degrees. So if you take 102... 0.17 degrees, and cut it in half, you get 51.09 degrees. So what this says is if you have two inscribed angles intercepting the same arc, they are going to be congruent themselves.
Now to try some examples. This asks you to find the measure of arc AB. Arc AB is here. So what is the degree measure of arc AB? Well, if the inscribed angle is 30, I know that the inscribed angle is going to be exactly half of the central angle, which will then be exactly the same as the arc. So once I know the central angle, I can tell you what the arc is. The central angle is going to be double the inscribed angle, 60 degrees, which therefore makes the arc 60 degrees. In this example, they want you to find the measure of the angle N if the arc JL is 180 degrees. So this arc here is 180 degrees, which is half the circle, which makes this inscribed angle exactly half of that, 90 degrees, because the inscribed angle is always half of the central angle and arc. Now you have a triangle within the circle, and we know from previous experience that a triangle has an angle sum of 180 degrees. So you're going to have the equation 90 plus 51 degrees plus n equals 180 degrees. And solving for n, combine like terms, 141 degrees plus n equals 180 degrees. Subtract 141 degrees from both sides. So 180 minus 141 is going to be 39 degrees. So n is 39 degrees. Number four says, find the measure of angle PSQ. PSQ is right here. So we need to find out what that angle measure is. They give you these two expressions to relate angle PSQ and PRQ. Now PSQ is the angle we've got to find. Notice how there's an X in the expressions. So if we find X, we can plug it back and find the angle. In order to find X, the unknown, we need to set up an equation. Now, PSQ and PRQ, they're both inscribed angles with the vertexes, vertices on the edge. Notice how they both open up to arc PQ. That then makes them congruent, and congruent means equal in measure. So therefore, I can set them equal to each other. 2x plus 22 is equal to 3x plus 13. In solving this equation, First, subtract 2x from both sides. 22 equals 3x minus 2x is just 1x, or x. Then subtract 13 from both sides. x is going to be equal to 9. Now, they didn't ask you to find x. They asked you to find the measure of angle PSQ. So take x and plug it back in to that expression for PSQ. So 2 times 9 plus 22. So I've replaced the x with 9, swapped it out. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 22 is 40 degrees. And we have found the measure of angle PSQ. Number 5 says to find the measure of each missing arc and angle. Well, we know CG, CD, D, E, and E, F. But we are unsure about what G, F 